So, hey, this is uh, Jim with Janestown. I'm here to do another opening. We had arrived literally about 10, 15 minutes ago, the new Inspire Turbo Sound IP300. Uh, people have been talking these uh, for uh, about a year now. They've been talking them up quite a bit. They're super lightweight. Uh, I want to say two six inch woofers and then three two inch high frequency drivers. Uh, and uh, so the do kind of a super mini line array. The whole thing is about 26 pounds, uh, and we're going to take them apart for you. Quick plug: uh, I've got my breast cancer can stick in T-shirt coming uh, on, and uh, and Drumathon is going to be coming up here at Clydemore Park. Uh, by the time we actually put this video up, I'm sure it's going to be a lot closer. So uh, just got to put the plug in there for support. Uh, breast cancer can stick in. So lightweight, like I said, just maybe not quite as light as lightweight should indicate. Um, so here's the, the box. The thing's going to look like that. You notice there's a phone on there. These are app controlled. Uh, they do have Bluetooth. There's going to be some controls here. We'll, we'll close in on those later. Get to open the real box now. AC power cord. And here is our baby. And manual. And yeah, it's kind of surprising how much the actual box weighs. I mean, it was noticeably lighter actually pulling the speaker itself <laughs> out of the box. But it's kind of bag off nice easy handle here in the back to grab by there's also a handle here and that's uh that's convenient michelle i know you don't like michelle doesn't like carrying stuff but you go ahead and just grab by the handle and pick it up it's not bad for a pa huh yeah it's gonna go flying across the corridor if i go around the corner <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to get your bungees out to hold them in place. But, here it is. There's your, the speaker in here and uh, two woofers are here. I don't know if you can see them through the, the grill there. And then these four uh, high frequency drivers and they're, ow, I just hit myself in the knee with this thing. <laughs> but they're angled. so. There's like one pointing that way, and one pointing this way, and one pointing that way, and one pointing this way. So they get super wide dispersion, and that's what uh, makes these speakers so effective. Um, you don't have to have as much actual volume when you've got broad coverage. It fills the room with sound. Um, and that's the whole thing about a line array, is that super wide dispersion. So here's the control on the back. And uh, I hope you can see this okay. But you got... Uh, XLR ins and outs, a power, and that's where the AC power switch here, and then you got this whole digital control back here, which has uh, uh, some equalization presets and things like that. So here is the the baby, and uh, we're going to set up a couple of them and uh, give ourselves kind of a, a look, see at what they uh, both, uh, how easy they are to set up and how they sound. So we'll be back shortly. Such, what do you think? Probably, it's pretty close to me. Oh, I didn't know you were filming. Sorry, yeah. 
So we're doing the setup now. Michelle turned the camera on when I wasn't looking. Surprise. Yep. So we got uh, three choices here, stand, wall, or corner. And I think despite the fact that we're kind of open here, we're going to call this a corner because it is kind of a corner of the room. Mode wise, it's got a multi-band. <laughs> it's got a multi-band equalizer with presets. For music, it suggests totally flat. For live, it's got a bit of a tail on both the low and high end, which uh, I would imagine is for uh, for a more uh, a more mid-rangey, more uh, present kind of sound. And then speech has an even deeper tail off the low and high end to really focus on the human uh, speech range. And then club, which has the opposite, has kind of a deep V uh, graphic equalizer like the way I used to set the graphic equalizer on my car stereo all the time. Um, I'm gonna go flat with this. Then it's also got EQ settings, just a standard three band bass, mid, and treble. Um, and let's see how much room we got. Uh, it goes from minus 10 to plus 10 dB uh, in each band. I'm going to leave that flat as well. Uh, and then it also, you can mix the various inputs. It's got channel A, which I've got hooked up right now, channel B, which I've got empty right now, and channel 1 Bluetooth. Uh, and you can balance each of those inputs. Oh, that's handy. So, and then uh, it is Bluetoothable as we just talked about. So there's some Bluetooth stuff. I'm gonna see what set up, see if there's anything else we've got. Uh, backlighting is on. Contrast of the screen. I can turn that down or up so it's easier to see the screen. Um, but that was fine where it was. I'm not sure what lock does. And then you can factory reset the whole thing. So I'm gonna go with exit there and exit there and there it is so we have the setup it's pretty pretty quick and easy um, it's got a 120 degree dispersion um, and so one of the issues we were just talking about before this is that uh, Daniel is hearing kind of a secondary hit on his drums through Michelle's mic so when he hits something He's got it in his headphones, so he's not hearing the delay. But when he hits something, it's coming out of the speaker, traveling to Michelle's microphone. Now, this isn't very far for sound to travel. The delay is probably only 10 to 20 milliseconds. Uh, but Daniel's hearing that as kind of a ghost extra note. Uh, and, uh, and it's kind of disrupting him. So we're going to move this out a little bit. So hopefully it doesn't play straight into Michelle's mic quite so much. Um, but with 120 degrees, that's something like this. So we should still be able to get the whole room. We don't really care if the people coming up the stairs can hear clear sound, uh, but we should be able to get the whole room uh, pretty well covered for sound from there. We're gonna put the other one in the corner over here on top of the, uh, the seismic audio subwoofer there, which we don't use these days. Um, but uh, but we may start if we go with these uh, because the only knock that anybody has ever had on these that I've been able to find on reviews is that they'd like a little more bass out of them uh, and it's always listed as a minor complaint. Um, that little 10 inch seismic audio subwoofer uh, it, it provides a nice little woof underneath everything and we might couple, uh, get another one of those and couple that with the, uh, with the IP300s for kind of a, a three-way system there. Uh, so that's possibly in the future, depending on how well these things work out. So that's the setup. Um, I'm gonna get the other one out and set it up, and then Michelle and I are gonna make some music and see what it sounds like. 